may I invite Hemant, who's going to tell us that don't get everything, just get a hinge. <laughs> thank you, Niren. I needed that. Uh, at the outset, I uh, would like to thank uh, Vaibhav and uh, Dr. Uh, Shokaraj Gopal for his kind invitation. Uh, it's especially you know, play, uh, special for me because I was born in Girgaon. I went to a school not far from here. And I spent my very early days here. So it's, you know, very nostalgic. In fact, seeing this area after a long, long time, it, it feels really wonderful. So on that note, uh, let, let me start with my talk. My brief is to talk on execution of hinge knee replacement. Now, hinge is obviously the last resort for uh, most our, uh, uh, armamentarium options. And uh, especially uh, given the fact that hinges are very expensive, and patient is at the end of the tether, you need to really you know, do a good job uh, when it comes to using a hinge. So to start with, I think one needs to really know and understand what implant he's decided to use and what type of hinges that you need to use. Now there are primarily two types of hinges uh, that are uh, available. One is what is called as condyle bearing, wherein the weight transmission actually happens through the condyles of the implant. So that means the polyethylene and the femoral component are actually articulated and uh, allow the weight uh, transmission. And the, the most common type of hinge in my practice that I use is uh, this Zimmer's uh, rotating hinge, where almost 95% of the weight transmission happens through the condyles. And this is uh, a, a beautiful system that I use uh, extensively. Other options that are available are, uh, this is from Smith & Nephew Legion, and uh, this is from... Uh, uh, Depew, this is uh, uh, the, this is the uh, hinge that uh, Depew offers with a lot of options that are available. We'll go into the details of these hinges. And second type of hinge that is there is what is called as ax axial load bearing, wherein all the weight transmission that happens is actually through the hinge mechanism itself. And uh, the polyethylene that is inserted in this system actually does not contribute anything at all in the weight bearing. It doesn't get worn out. It's basically there for filling that gap between, uh, you know, created between the femoral component and the tibial base. I'll show you examples of that. And uh, just a word about this uh, uh, link. You would imagine that if the weight transmission was happening through the, uh, the hinge mechanism itself, it would fail pretty rapidly. But this actually has a 40-year follow-up. Uh, and so obviously there are some good features with link. So just a word about link uh, system. This is how the system is, and this is how the hinge mechanism is, is you know, at the back of the femoral com uh, components. Uh, the stems are actually you know, very narrow stems, so they are not actually aiming for any fit within the canal and you, all you're doing is actually having fully cemented stems on either sides. So this system is actually very simple to use because you're not bothered about the sizing, you just put the component in with fully cemented uh, stem and that is how it works. Uh, the only reason why it has really stood the test of time and why it has worked is because it allows flexion, you know, it allows rotation uh, to take place, almost 20 degrees of rotations on both internal and external rotation. So the load transmission doesn't actually, uh, you know, get transmitted to the cement bone interface and doesn't loosen out uh, rapidly. That is the reason why it has actually survived uh, this long. Because if you look, go through the history of uh, knee arthroplasty, all the previous uh, early generation of implants were initially were hinges and there was no rotation allowed. And link allows that rotation, and therefore the loads do not get transmitted. So it obviously gives you that stability uh, 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 and allows the rotation uh, that prevents all the stresses from being transferred. So with that, I think when do one does one decide to use a hinge, you need to have use a hinge when there is global instability. And especially when there is a complete loss of medial restraint in the form of uh, medial collateral ligament. You can have uh, the same effect with gross bone loss, with loss of epicondyles. And uh, there are some situations, where, especially with hyperextension deformity, where uh, the only way you can prevent that hyperextension from, from happening is actually uh, using a hinge. Because hinges normally have that hyperextension stop. There's a bumper stop, especially in uh, Zimmer's rotating hinge, there is a extension a bumper stop uh, with the polyethylene. And many neuropathic knees uh, where you cannot really control the, the posterior soft tissues, where some uh, uh, even uh, gross uh, primary knees where uh, you know, maybe a rheumatoid knee or gross, gross bone loss, you may have to use a hinge in a primary scenario as well. 
So if you consider the soft tissue incompetency, there is increasing level of constraint and last is the hinge uh, mechanism. I'm just going to go through some examples. I think the best learning comes from examples. Uh, here is a case uh, that I had did, uh, I did uh, and the uh, patient was f f f doing very well. I think about four years later, the patient had a fall in the uh, bathroom and uh, dislocated the knee. And we reduced the knee uh, very easily, the x-ray looked very good, but patient had progressive hyperextension deformity, obviously stripped all the soft tissues at the back and collaterals as well. So the only way you can actually control that situation is using a hinge, because no, even LCCK or constrained knee is not going to work in this scenario. So this is uh, what, this was uh, how the X-ray was uh, on high, uh, on hyperextension, and the only way you can control this kind of scenario is using a hinge. Now remember here the this is the rotating hinge from Zimmer. Uh, the tibial stem that I have used here is a non-modular one, but you also have a modular option where you can actually add uh, extra stem. Now the difference in the length of this uh, tibial uh, stem uh, is actually uh, quite remarkable because. With this kind of length of the tibial stem, you do not actually have to add a stem every single situation, every single case. But many a times you have that option. If you use a modular tibial stem, tibial base plate, you can add a stem there. Now, most of the times on the femoral side, I like to use an uncemented stem as in this scenario because I do not like to get the canal all the way in, uh, in, the, uh, in the, on the femoral side. So I use a well-fitting tibial stem then only do the metaphyseal cementing if the bone loss, bone at the level of the metaphysis is reasonable. So I would do only the metaphyseal cementing and leave that stem to get some uh, contact with the cortex on the endostyle cortex on the femoral side. So this is how I do most of my, uh, uh, most of my uh, hinges um, using uh, uh, uncemented stems. Now, here is an example of this patient presented to me having had this index surgery uh, uh, almost one year prior. This apparently was a navigated surgery. There are several things that are wrong here. Patients uh, had a dislocating patella with every time, every flexion, the knee was dislocating. And on a valgus stress, there is no medial uh, collateral. So this is obviously an iatrogenic uh, injury failure. And those with a keen eye will notice that the tibial component is in internal rotation. So there are several things that went wrong with this navigated surgery. Actually, it was done in this city. Uh, and patient had uh, been unable to weight bear ever since the surgery was done. And she presented one year later. So this is just to show you that there's no virtual medial stop at all. The medial side is completely incompetent. And in this scenario, one has to uh, actually use a hinge. And I think for this particular case, I uh, had chosen to use noise because of inavailability of RHK. And uh, this is on exposure. As you can see, the tibial tuberosity is lateral and the tibial component has been put in internal rotation. And here, because the patella has been dislocating for almost uh, over a year since the index surgery, uh, this is just the preparation of the tibial component and this is the noise in and uh, the, the double breasting of uh, the extensor mechanism was done to get the patella back. Now, one thing about this particular system, that Noyles uh, rotating hinge, is that you lose a lot of bone if you're ever deciding to put Noyles. So if you have extensive bone loss to start with, that is fine. But if you have to do, uh, 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 you know, when the distal femur is still intact, you end up using huge amounts of bone, especially posterior condyles, and uh, almost a lot of metaphyseal bone is lost when you're using a noil hinge. So just beware of that. And uh, just to show you the post-op result, this is, I think, a four-year follow-up. The patella is uh, positioned centrally, and patient is uh, happy with this situation. Now, here is a patient, uh, I think, uh, who had this uh, nasty road traffic accident. Uh, the primary surgeon tried to do some sort of uh, what you call in Indian language, I think Hindi, jugad fixation. And the uh, patient then had the implant removal and was completely stiff and ankylosed in, I think, full extension with just barely 20 degrees of range of motion. So this is what uh, the range of motion was here. Yeah, so that is what, uh, and it was all uh, rigid uh, all around, as you can imagine, almost uh, one and a half years uh, since uh, the patient had this fracture. Now the way you can do it is the hinge, and that is how the rotating hinge looks, and that is the post-operative x-ray of the same patient. Uh, hinge is particularly good if you have a periprosthetic low, uh, fracture that is very low, and the only way the kind of bone that you are left is here is this uh, 
And here you need to fully cement uh, the stem in the canal, and that is how uh, the post-operative X-ray looks at the same patient. Similarly, a fractured on the lateral side here. Now the collapsed lateral side, lateral side is completely compromised. There's no stability on the lateral side. And here I attempted to put a, uh, cones, but uh, that uh, the, even the smallest cone available was actually much bigger, and we didn't have shapes available at that time. They were introduced much later. So the, again, the best option was to use a hinge. Again, a significant metavessel cementing, but no cement going down the canal. Uh, just one example. This was a case was uh, shared by my ex-fellow. Uh, this was a very stiff rheumatoid patient who suddenly gained mobility while preparation. And as you can imagine what has happened, patient actually developed a fracture while the knee was being prepared. And uh, this is what uh, he was left with. And uh, I think they had planned the link hinge anyway because the opposite side was a link hinge and this is how they did it. I'm just sharing his pictures because I don't normally use this uh, link hinge. For consider completion, I borrowed these pictures. So that is how the link hinge looks. And that is the post-operative uh, X-ray of the same patient. Now this was a robotic uh, done knee that uh, presented to me with the right side uh, x-ray, uh, having uh, had this done about just one month prior, having had two surgeries. I don't know what was done. And this is what uh, I was left with. So I have reconstructed that using uh, uh, the sleeves and the noils hinge. And that is how uh, the noils hinge looks and that is how post-operative x-ray looks. So I think to summarize, uh, for execution of a good hinge, you need to really understand the design rationale and the techniques. In significant bone loss, I think you really need to have fully cemented stems whenever uh, it's appropriate. If you have reasonable bone, you could do a metaphysical cementing. Rotational alignment is actually what needs to be judged, especially on the femoral side. And hyperextension or flexion deformity certainly needs attention. Thank you for your attention.